Okay, so for today, we're not going to be taking too many notes. Um, or at least you won't be writing down very many notes. Um, we're going to go over some stuff, um, and then we're also going to be starting a lab today. Now, before we get into the Big Bang, um, I need everybody to pull out their notes. Pull out page 11. And we're going to take a few notes in here. The objective for this section is students will be able to describe the Big Bang Theory and the evidence that support this theory. Uh, the evidence that helps support it that we're going to learn about in this class is the cosmic background radiation, the abundance of elements that are spread throughout the universe, and what we're trying to get to right now, the distance slash redshift relation for galaxies. But before we understand all that, we need to understand light and how it travels as a wave. To start that, we started that with sound because sound travels as a wave and we're going to relate the two. Hopefully we've already been over that. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to the electromagnetic spectrum. So first, let's do a little bit of review. So what is a light year? Go ahead, raise your hand, and pause the video so you can answer this question. What is a light year? Hopefully, you answered that a light year is a distance, not a time, because time would be wrong. A distance. Light year is the distance light travels in one year. Now, the next question is, where can light travel? Well, light is actually special. It's actually electromagnetic radiation. It can actually travel through the air, through water, through anything that is um, translucent or transparent, and it can also do something very special that sound cannot do. Sound has to travel through a medium. It has to go through material. It has to go through matter. It has to go through stuff. Light, however, does not. Light does not have to go through stuff. It can go through the empty vacuum, which is space. Light can travel through the emptiness of space. Now the next question, does sound travel too? Um, hopefully you did notice that in the experiment that we did where we yelled across the field and we get further apart and the sound would travel and we would see that delay. It would take longer and longer and longer the further we got apart. Now, I'm making it sound like it took forever. It took less than two seconds on about every trial that we did. But there was a definite increase in time that it would take for the sound to go from one line the other indicating that the sound did in fact travel. Now light also travels through space and time, well it travels through time, but um, light also travels. All right, so here you see the, the X, I, 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 that's 5, 6, 7, 8, light as a wave. That should coincide with the bottom of page 11 on your notes. And then where it says A, the electromagnetic spectrum on your notes, what I want you to add there is that blue part that says AKA light spectrum. Because um, AKA, in case you didn't know, stands for also known as Sorry, for some reason my cat keeps wanting to curl up on the keyboard here and also present with me today. So she's uh, she's being very forceful today. So if you can hear her purring or rubbing the computer, that is her. So anyway, aka also known as light spectrum. Now we define the electromagnetic spectrum as the range of electromagnetic radiation. This includes things like x-rays, UV rays, also known as ultraviolet rays, uh, the visible light spectrum, so all the colors you see, infrared, microwaves, and not like the machines that we use, but the actual radiation that the machines generate to cook your food, and more. Stars, including our star, will actually emit a wide range of electromagnetic radiation. 
Now I know all of you still need to write that. Go ahead and pause the video now so you can get that written down. Right, so light waves, or more appropriately called electromagnetic waves, can travel without a medium. I already mentioned that, and that just means they can travel through the emptiness of space. So when you see light coming into our atmosphere from our sun, that's because the light can travel all the way through space. When you look up at the night sky and you can see the very few stars that are, are able to see now with all the light pollution, um, but that light can reach our planet from very distant far off solar systems because it travels through space. And they travel as vibrations in what's called electrical and magnetic fields. So this um, electromagnetic field you might learn a lot more about it if you take physics but for our class uh, that's pretty much all we're gonna go into that so the way that they move is similar to the waves that other things like matter and sound move uh, they move sort of like the waves on the top of a water in the pond there are all sorts of waves in the electromagnetic spectrum there are radio waves infrared visible light that's the colors we see everything your eyes are pick up is what we call visible light um, ultraviolet light x-rays gamma rays all of these are just basically different types of light now in your notes we are going to uh, sketch in a diagram of the electromagnetic spectrum we're not going to draw this one this one it works okay. It's basically showing you, these, these images down below are showing you the size of the wavelength, indicating how big these things are, uh, how tiny they are. Um, but we're actually going to draw a diagram that shows what type of things uh, use this radiation. Just kind of give us a little bit more familiarity with it. So in your notes, flip to page 12. At the top of page 12, it says drawing in the electromagnetic spectrum. So right there in that space provided after the two and before the three, we are actually going to draw in or sketch in the electromagnetic spectrum diagram. So we are a little bit more familiar with it. Now let me switch over to Microsoft Paint. Not the easiest drawing tool, but I don't have... Adobe Illustrator actually on this computer so we're gonna have to just deal with what we got when you don't have what you need you improvise alright so what you're gonna do is we are going to draw in a rectangular box that takes about half the space a little bit less than half the space of this section in your notes now we're gonna split that up into a few sections so what we're gonna do is we are going to go almost to half, a little bit less than half, and we are going to draw two different lines. This is going to help represent the area where our visible spectrum is located. So go ahead, right about here-ish, draw yourself a line going straight down and another one right next to it preferably straight okay great that's gonna be our visible spectrum now we just need to break up the left and right sections into three different sections. We're going to do that by drawing two lines on each side. So about here we're going to draw, sorry about right here we're going to draw another line. 
Sorry, my cursor's going all over the place here right now. Uh, there we go. That's what you're going to do. That, that was like magic. So what you're going to do is you're just going to go over and draw two lines on one side, making it into three different sections. Draw two lines on your side. Make sure you're leaving a, a bigger gap here for our radio waves. Um, that spot's going to have a lot more wavelengths in it than the others. Um, there we go. Okay. Now you've got it all drawn in. And if you haven't, pause the video so you can. We're going to label each one of these sections in a minute. But right now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the difference between all of these different uh, radiation in the spectrum. And the difference is literally the wavelengths. And what I mean in wavelength is how f compact that wave is, how close the peaks of the wave are to one another. Now if we go here to the left side of the spectrum, the wavelengths are going to be very, very tight. On the right side, they're going to be very, very, very stretched out. So the difference between infrared radiation and visible light radiation is basically the stretched out of the wave. The more stretched out it becomes, the more it becomes more like a radio wave. The more compact it becomes, the more it will become more like ultraviolet radiation. So what I want you to do right now is see this thing that I've sketched in really quickly like magic is I want you to scribble in a wavelength that's really really tight here the gamma radiation and then I want you to to slowly wave it out so it stretches out longer and longer and longer until we get here to the radio waves. Now in reality gamma rays or gamma waves are so small you cannot detect them um, with your eyes like we have here you need special instruments these are the wavelengths that move on the order of electron vibrations now also on the other end the radio waves are so long and large that they some of them are as wide apart as skyscrapers I mean they're very 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 tall go ahead and pause the video and get that drawn in Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to stretch out a few lines from this visible spectrum to make a wider selection. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a couple lines and we are going to draw them from the left and the right side of the visual part of the light spectrum, of the electromagnetic spectrum. So go ahead and just take a line from the end, draw it out, just like I've done here, and do the same to the other side. Once you've got that done, go ahead and make a rectangular box down here below. This is going to function as a zoomed in look at the visual part of the spectrum. We're going to do this because pretty much that's all we ever see with our eyes, our naked eyes. Um, so we're going to do that so that we can see that a little better. Alright, next step is we are going to label all of these. Label the left one gamma radiation. All right, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can actually see what I'm doing here. There we go. So label the one on the left, the far left, as gamma radiation. And the next one we're going to label X-ray. Now, gamma radiation is so energetic that it is cancer-causing. It will cause your DNA to be altered and to be changed. X-rays do as well. Uh, the x-rays are the same x-rays that you get when you go to the doctor's office for broken bone or for tooth x-rays. Um, they are a lot weaker and they don't sh expose you to too much. So generally, it's good to have these type of x-rays 
because the health benefits outweigh the negative drawbacks, but the x-ray is also an energetic enough to alter your DNA as well. All right, so let's draw an image that helps represent both of these. I'm going to go ahead and draw like a danger symbol because they're radioactive, sort of a radioactive symbol here. And I'm going to use that to represent both gamma and x-rays. Go ahead and draw yourself a symbol. Okay, now let's go ahead and start to move on to the next thing. The next one is going to be UV radiation, or what we're going to actually type is ultraviolet. So the next range, ultraviolet, also known as UV. This is the type of radiation that is absorbed in the ozone layer. It's very intense radiation. If we were exposed to a lot of it, it would cause us blistering, cause third degree burns. However, because we have that ozone layer, we have most of that blocked out, and so our skin isn't affected as much, and we can actually live on land without having to have severe protection. So to represent the ultraviolet, I am going to go ahead and draw in some um, sunblock. So let's go ahead and draw a bottle of sunblock to represent this. If you're you're really, really right, if you're you're the Irish white, you probably use sunblock SPF five million. Um, but if you're not so white, maybe you're Latina, um, or maybe you're just a dark skinned white person or darker skinned white person and maybe you just use SPF five, but whatever it is, go ahead and draw yourself in some sunblock right there. Wow, I did that really well. Magic. Okay, now, next we are on to the visible part of the spectrum. Now, the visible part of the spectrum is what your eyes see. This is everything your eyes see. You do not see into the ultraviolet. You do not see into the infrared. You only see visible light. So let's go ahead and label this the visible light. right here in this area. Alright, so I'm going to call this visual light or visible light. Either one will work. Now let's go ahead and go down to that rectangular box that we created earlier before. Now, our rainbow is going to go in a very specific order. The difference between our purple color and our red color is these wavelengths. Literally the difference between purple and red is how stretched out the wave becomes. If you squish a wave of red, it will change to orange. If you squish the wavelength more, it will become green and then blue and it can become purple. So what we're going to do here is because our the way we've drawn our electromagnetic spectrum is that we've had the smaller waves on the left while the larger waves on the right. So what we are going to do is we are going to put violet or purple on the left and we're going to fade that into red on the right. Now like I said, the difference is literally the width of the wave. So right here on the left, I want you to label this 400 nanometers. This is the wavelength where visible light for our eyes, for most, most normal people, um, this is the wavelength your eye is going to be able to start seeing purple at. So label the left side uh, 400 nanometers. Now nanometers is 10 to the negative ninth power meters. So basically, if you took one meter and you 
to move the decimal place over to the left nine times, that is what this number would be. It is very, 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 very small here. This is smaller than the width of a hair. Now I want you to put a little bit left to the middle. I want you to put the label 500 nanometers. A little bit right to the middle. I want you to put 600 nanometers. And then all the way to the right, I want you to label this 800 nanometers. That is going to be red. Our deep dark reds are going to be in the 800 nanometer range. Oh, the edge of my paper though, so it's not going to let me draw that. Let me just delete the nanometers here and squish over my 800 so that I can get it over there in the corner. There. All right, so now what I want you to do is I want you to color in this whole spectrum, starting with purple on the left. 500 is going to be green. Don't screw that up. 500 is green. 600 is going to be the orange range, while 800 is going to be the 9. So go ahead and do your, your rainbow again. That's purple blue, aqua, green, yellow, orange, and red. Color it the way I've done so. Uh, if I move on too fast for you, go ahead and hit pause so you can get that done. Now don't be lame. Get up. Go get the color pencils from the front of the room and color this in like you should. Pause the video. Get that done right now. Okay. Now, in this section, we are going to move into the infrared. Now, a lot of times I like to pronounce it wrong in my head. I pronounce it the infrared because it helps me remember that red is next to the infrared part of the spectrum. This is the part of the spectrum which snakes use to see. So, snakes can see really well at night because they're not using visible light. What they're using is infrared radiation, a type of infrared radiation, uh, which is heat. Heat coming off of the body of organisms, allowing them to see their surroundings. Now, stars give off heat, obviously. Uh, they're very, very hot structures. But a lot of the infrared radiation that we detect actually is... Um, not heat radiation coming off of a star. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw this remote control here. Let me replace it with a, my, oh, there you go. I drew it really well. Draw a remote control here because remote controls use infrared radiation to send a signal from your remote control to your television to change the channel. Now the next one we're going to go on to is microwaves. Microwaves, not the machine, but the actual waves, Microwaves work really well because that wavelength interacts with the water molecule, allowing the water molecule to vi vibrate rapidly. When it does this, it causes that vibration to transfer into heat energy and it will heat up your water. This is why um, microwaves heat up things like rolls really, really fast because there's a little bit of moisture causing the all the energy to go into the water molecules causing the whole bread to warm up but it's also why they're really really crappy at heating things like napkins up very well if the napkin isn't very moist if it is completely dry uh, you can cook the napkin and it doesn't actually heat up too much especially compared to like a bread roll or something like that so for microwaves let's go ahead and just draw in a picture of a microwave because microwaves generate microwave radiation to help cook your food. That's a very convincing microwave. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. The next one is a broad category uh, with many different wavelengths. Uh, we're going to call this whole category radio waves. So radio, R-A-D-I-O, W-A-V-E-S, radio waves. Okay, now, radio waves are used for more than just a radio. 
In fact, these are the frequencies of which your cell phone uses to communicate with other uh, cell phone towers that allows you to call people. So I'm going to go ahead and draw an iPhone. You may draw whatever phone that you find is the best that you like. Um, I'm going to do an iPhone because I know what the Apple looks like. So that's what I'm going to do. And then radio waves obviously work with your radio. Radio in your car, radio in your house. Um, all the different stations on a radio are set at just slightly different wavelengths or frequencies. These slightly different wavelengths or frequencies are picked up by the radio. As you change the channel, it tunes the antenna to change the, the frequency of which it's picking up and then you can hear a completely different channel. Another thing that works on the lines of radio waves are our satellites out in space. The satellites communicate with us and us with them um, through radio waves. I know this doesn't look much like a satellite, but uh, we're going to pretend it looks like a satellite and you're going to stop mocking my drawing. Oh, it looks perfect. Alright, go ahead and draw yourself a beautiful satellite like my gorgeous one. I'm sure that's exactly what they look like too.